Greetings from ABC Acres. I'm Grant Shadden, here in one of our agroforestry tree belts to show you a couple methods that we use to increase the health and production of our trees, as well as to show you a few of the tree species of many that we have in our tree belts. So we'll get right to it. Uh, we have a maple tree here on my right and we've planted uh, four different varieties of maples. Uh, some are for sap and syrup production in the future, and then some are actually for high value timber species in the future as well. And then to my left, we have the black locust. And this is a, a permaculture plant in the sense that it has many uses. Many uh, people who practice permaculture love to plant black locust trees. They have a very vigorous growth rate. This one is only a couple years old and it's already pushing uh, close to seven feet or more in height. And it fixes nitrogen in the soil. It has a really high BTU output. So it burns really hot, really clean for fuel wood. It is very rot resistant. So it's a great fence post or uh, outdoor building application building material and it coppices really well which means we could cut this down four to six inches from the ground and it will re-sprout very quickly um, and grow very vigorously as a more freeform shrub and that's one way people use it uh, in harvesting sustainable fuel wood on their permaculture properties now one of the things we do is chop and drop mulching and last week's video, I showed you this Japanese hand sickle. And here, a couple of the plants we have next to our maple tree to increase its health, vigor, and growth rate is comfrey, which is a dynamic nutrient accumulator that I've spoken of before, and lupin, which is a native nitrogen fixer. So typically, when you're doing chop and drop mulching, you want to do it when the precipitation exceeds evaporation. So for us here in Western Montana, that's going into the fall and winter where our days are shorter, cooler, and we get some of our fall rain events or early season snows. And so that moisture will stay in the ground. Here it's basically right at the start of summer, the longest days of the year. And we're using this mulch to help hold moisture in the soil. And we have drip uh, irrigation in here. So we're not concerned about any of this drying out. It's gonna maintain its moisture level and it will break down quickly as a result, all this organic matter will. And so we just mulch around the base of the tree what we're chopping down building the organic matter, cycling the nutrient. These roots will die back a little bit, decomposing in the subsoil, further pushing production. And this lupin, as a nitrogen fixer, when we cut it back, it will release nitrogen into the soil to help fertilize this maple tree as well. And you can see some seed pods here. So I will actually leave a few of those taller stalks up so that they can release their seed and continue to spread around the bases of our trees to further increase that, that building effect. So we only had to plant a few seeds around here and they will just keep reproducing themselves. Here we also have from our tr two trees or shrubs in one hole, our autumn olive and some people have said well autumn olive can be considered an invasive which is true but it's all about how you manage and maintain it so for us it's more mulch and it is instead of being herbaceous and breaking down as quickly it's a woody perennial and so it will take longer to decompose and we'll have this kind of staggered nutrient release as a result. So now that I've got it 
cleared out for the most part, we can see what we have here with the maple and we're gonna come in and prune. Now, once again, pruning isn't typically best done this time of year. I wanna show it for the sake of technique, but also we have our nice drip irrigation right here. So I'm not worried about any kind of uh, overstress with lack of water for this tree. But we like to clean up these lower branches and really push production upwards. Especially with the tighter tree spacing we have, but also for the sake of timber species, we want nice, straight, tall, maple trees and when you're pruning you don't really want to prune more than a third of the canopy of the tree in any go so i'm just going to prune a little bit more here and call this one good for this round and we will leave that right there i could come in and take this out um, as we want to maintain our central leader but I've already pruned a decent amount, so we'll wait to do that another time. And we can come over here and do the same thing with this black locust tree. And you can see, if I want to get after it, I can get this all knocked down pretty quickly and incorporated down with our wood chip mulch that we started with. And now we don't have to bring in any exterior, exterior organic matter to build this soil to keep these trees mulched. We're growing our own mulch now. The same thing here to push the upwards production of our black locust trees. We can come in and prune these lower branches just to open it up a little bit. And these trees, you can see how closely they're spaced. This isn't healthy long term, but we're producing a longer term uh, deeper rooted nitrogen fixation for this maple tree in the medium term. And once these canopies really start competing and we've pruned this up, we're gonna give preference to our, our maple tree. It's our long-term overstory high canopy tree. This is actually a replacement fence post for us on our property. We're growing many different black locust trees on the property so that the next go round when we're replacing our fence posts, we'll have homegrown fence posts that will last for 50 years or more in the ground without any chemical treatment, which sounds like a great deal to us. So you can see, I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit more. Well, you can see in pretty short order, we've been able to chop and drop these two trees prune them up a little bit. And while we're doing that, we're observing their health, just checking in on them, making sure they're doing all right. We can always check the drip and underneath to make sure we have good soil moisture content, observing and interacting with the resources that we're producing here on the landscape. And at the same time, building this system, sequestering carbon, building soil, increasing the growth and production of our trees, which are gonna have so many different uses for us here at ABC Acres. And you can do the same thing on your property. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below this video. And as always, thanks for watching. Telepapapati.